Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, the topic of uh, this presentation is Neural Machine Translation. And with this topic, we are going to finish uh, our uh, uh, main module where we are discussing the machine translation development approaches or methods. So this is going to be the last one uh, as part of that module. I have divided this topic into these uh, five, six, uh, seven, I'm sorry, seven uh, uh, points, a basic concept and a very brief uh, history, working of uh, neural machine translation, issues with R and N, we would know what does this mean, R and N with attention in machine translation and alternative to R and N, which is CNN, and this abbreviation will be explained at its time then the weaknesses of NMT. So let's start with the basic concepts. The, we have discussed so far the rule-based machine translation in the development of machine translation systems mm -hmm. and also the next development was the statistical machine translation based on corpus-based and a couple of other main approaches that we have already discussed. This machine translation approach actually is based on SMT model but it, there is a drastic development in it that occurred uh, in, in the area of machine translation and it was artificial neural networks. Uh, although technically uh, uh, you know I, I can't explain them what are they because this is not our area however we can get this uh, image and we can get some concept of uh, artificial neural network. So here you see on the left side input layer where different inputs have been shown and the hidden layers which are not uh, you know visible uh, and then the output layers. So these uh, artificial uh, neural networks actually are uh, designed and prepared on the basis of human brain. Uh, the way human brain works so these networks are uh, used for different uh, in different areas uh, of uh, human activity so the major uh, development that took place in the area of machine translation within the statistical models was the, uh, the inclusion of artificial neural, neural networks so neural networks models used to learn a statistical model as i said and then neural machine translation predicts this from here we 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 we, we are going to talk about neural machine translation so machine um, it predicts the likelihood of a, sex, a sequence of, of words so it actually preempts it predicts what could be the likelihood of of a sentence just like the human brain when we uh, hear someone talking and he or she starts uh, his uh, you know utterance with certain words so our mind our brain automatically predicts how she is going to you know uh, finish uh, her or his uh, sentence and so on so this prediction is also there because of the artificial neural networks so it understands the entire sentence in a single integrated model uh, prior to that phrase based uh, statistical models they used to understand uh, the sentence in parts but this here, the single integrated model uh, is uh, because of the artificial neural networks. In neural machine translation, lesser memory is needed uh, by neural networks as compared to the traditional SMT models. All parts of the neural translation model are trained jointly. So here the training also the machine brain is trained uh, jointly from end to end here the connections are so strong that the first uh, you know step uh, and there is a kind of uh, you know anticipation that what would be the last step so end to end training means the source to target text production uh, training is uh, possible within these uh, with the help of these neural networks and the purpose to maximize the translation performance. Single system can be trained directly on source and target text uh, together. It is, as I said, and I repeat, it is, uh, you know, the analogy, it is based, it is prepared on the analogy of the human brain. Specialized system used in SMT learning not needed here. 
A single neural network reads a sentence and gives the correct translation. Being end-to-end -end systems, only one model is required for the translation. NMT is able to learn directly. Very brief history, not too far, is deep learning applications. They are related to the human, you know, as I said the earlier, uh, the, the idea was to use the analogy of human brain here. So the deep learning applications, neural networks, they appeared in 1990s. The first scientific paper on using neural networks in machine translation appeared in 2014. And then it followed a lot of advances in, in, in the following few years. In 2015, uh, there was the first appearance of neural machine translation systems. So uh, not mm, so long, uh, I mean five years only the history of uh, this uh, neural machine translation. Now we can come to the working and please keep the basic concept in your, in your mind because we, uh, I, I, I may you know, repeat some of the concept that some of the things that I have discussed mentioned earlier, but keep that concept, basic concept in your mind and then uh, you know, uh, be with me. Neural machine translation is the next step of SMT. We have already, you know, uh, known this, said this. It departs from the phrase-based statistical approaches. True, very much. Main departure is use of vector representations for words and sentences. So the idea of the vector uh, is here that uh, the vector, as we can see, has uh, two major uh, elements. One is direction. It should have a direction and it should have also a magnitude. So we see a tail there and then a head there because of the direction and also the magnitude is essential part of the vector. So this, you know, this the, the main departure is use of vector representation for words and sentences. The structure of the model is, uh, is uh, simpler than SMT no separate model for language translation and recording and reordering is needed in neural machine translation because everything is connected uh, in a way that they it, they work in in an integrated way so uh, you know what we saw in the previous smt models that there was a separate model for language separate model for translation and separate model for uh, reordering but here a single model uh, based on the neural networks uh, can take care of all these uh, three things. Just a single sequence model that predicts one word at a time. A bidirectional, oh, we are entering into little uh, technical details, a bidirectional recurrent neural network which is uh, RNN uh, is of course uh, is, the, is the working baseline. The first RNN known as encoder uh, which encodes uh, before that recurrent neural model. Let me show you the image here. So this is a, a GIF of uh, RNN where we can see on the left side encoder and decoder. And there is attention and we will talk about attention after some time. But uh, keep eye on the encoder and the decoder. It's a very simple uh, image or GIF of uh, this uh, and the translation is taking place one more time. So these are the uh, RNN recurrent neural models and uh, this model has two uh, basic elements first RNN known as encoder which encode a source sentence into a fixed length vector as we have seen here in this image so encoder is encoding source length sentence into a you know is, is in a in a fixed length vector and the second RNN known as the decoder, this predicts words in the target language and outputs a translation from the encoder, encoded vector. You can see here. The whole uh, encoder decoder system is jointly uh, trained to maximize correct translation. 
there are issues with the R and N. So R and N face difficulties in encoding long inputs into a single vector. This is the problem associated with this R and N model, recurrent neural networks. The problem stems from the fixed length internal representation. If there is a length, length is fixed and it is internally, you know, fixed. So the problem may arise for the longer sentences. So fixed size representation can not capture all the semantic details of a very long sentences though. So this is the biggest issue associated with the RNN. Uh, of course, the solution is the use of an attention mechanism. As I, you know, when I show you this uh, GIF, I, I told you there is a uh, attention is also there in between encoder and decoder. So the scientists, the software experts, they found this uh, solution, the use of attention mechanism. What is that attention mechanism allows the model to learn where to place attention on the input sequence for output sequence. A kind of, uh, you can say, a check in the brain of machine whether the translation is correct or not. So attention uh, model reads the whole sentence or paragraph first. This is the, this is of course the 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 addition because the attention and it needs time. Then uh, produces the translated words one at a time, focusing on a different part of the input sentence. So the purpose of uh, the addition of attention mechanism is to gather the semantic details required to produce the next output word. So what is the relationship of this word to the next and to the next to the previous and so on so forth. The, the, the internal you know relationship between the between the uh, sentence and the structure of the source text and the target text and of course uh, the addition of attention mechanism uh, from these experts uh, it has of course uh, solved the problem to to some some extent so RNN with attention is currently the state of the art architecture used for raw machine translation. This model remains the dominant architecture for several language pair. It is used in the heart of the Google neural machine translation system. This one uh, RNN with uh, attention. Uh, some of the uh, scientists in the area of software engineering, they also uh, brought another solution and it is known as CNN, which is the convolutional neural networks uh, as, a, as an alternative for RNN. And, but they were mostly used in image. Let me show the image of the RNN, uh, CNN first. I think I could not include the image here, although I had an image of uh, CNN, uh, but I somehow I deleted it. But it is, you know, it is used for the imaging most of the time. It is used for the imaging. That's why it was not, it has not been so far successful in neural machine translation. So it is good for some other, uh, you know, human uh, endeavors, human uh, aspects, but not for the natural language. In the end, let's come uh, to the weaknesses of general weakness of uh, neural machine translation is slow speed in training and uh, inter inference. And this slow speed in training and uh, inference uh, is you know partially associated with the addition of uh, attention in uh, RNN because when we when this uh, attention mechanism was added into RNN it uh, needed uh, time for that purpose ineffectiveness in dealing with the uh, rare words is another weakness and uh, sometimes fails to translate all words in the source sentence. So these are the general weaknesses associated with NMT. So with this, we end our lecture. Dear students, take very good care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum.